Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to welcome you to this fourth uh, conference on the results from road transport research coming up from Horizon 2020 projects. My name is uh, this is uh, Samaras. I'm professor at the uh, University of Thessaloniki in Greece, and in I'm also vice chairman of uh, AirTrack, uh, and uh, in, in this capacity, I have been uh, chairing this uh, conference for the last for, for the last uh, three years, and this is uh, the fourth year, and I'm extremely uh, delighted that I am in the same uh, position to chair again and to help the uh, uh, overall performance of this of this very interesting conference. Uh, it is always a pleasure to see uh, the very strong uh, interest of the scientific community as a whole and of the policy makers and of the industry in this particular uh, conference. All stakeholders are present. And uh, as we are in this very particular uh, period of uh, that it, it is described in this uh, actually uh, in, and the character of COVID-19 is imposing its uh, its presence we had to turn to uh, the, the this format this uh, virtual format for, for the conference exploring the best capabilities the uh, technology in this area can offer and despite the fact we cannot see each other physically, we cannot interact physically, we have, as Bianca very well described before, we have other advantages, many advantages, which are extremely interesting and probably they pave the way for the new era. Let me tell you that the very bright side uh, of, this, uh, of this conference is that we have doubled the participation. More than 650 participants have registered this year as opposed to about 300 uh, last year. And in addition to that, 122 speakers will be here present in order to share the results with you. So the new format uh, has brought new uh, directions, but the main objectives are always the same. It is to share the uh, uh, results and the outcomes of the different research and innovation projects and try to see again what the usability and what the interactions and the interdisciplinary character of these projects may produce. This year, 2020, in addition to all the previous events, uh, is also special. It is special in the, f in the, in the sense that uh, Horizon 2020 is coming to its end However, many interesting things are ongoing in the preparation of the future. And for this reason, uh, we are going to be joined by Patrick Child, who is Deputy Director General in DG Research and Innovation, and who kindly, kindly agreed to share some of his thoughts with us on what we have to expect for the near future, for the near future as regards uh, research and innovation activities at European level. So we will listen to his speech right away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you here to the fourth edition of the Horizon 2020 Road Transport Research European Conference. We all regret not being able to meet and exchange in person, but this year has upended our professional and personal lives in many, many ways. But in addressing you today, I'd like to talk about three things in particular. Firstly, the context of the European Green Deal and the post-COVID recovery. Secondly, the vital contribution of road transport research in responding to these challenges. And thirdly, Horizon Europe, the European Union's Future Research and Innovation Framework Programme, and within this, more specifically, our plans for new public-private partnerships to support road transport research. Let me start then with the European Green Deal and the post-COVID recovery. It's almost exactly one year ago 
that President von der Leyen first presented the European Green Deal, an ambitious action plan to boost the efficient use of resources by moving to a clean, circular economy to restore biodiversity and to cut pollution. The European Green Deal outlines investments needed and financing tools. It explains how to ensure a just and inclusive transition. And above all, it sets us on the path to reach climate neutrality by 2050. Making the European Green Deal a reality will fundamentally, irreversibly transport us all into a new era, a new green era. era. More green has upended the global economy. The unprecedented impact of this crisis has shown that entire economies, industries and communities can shut down and face the challenges of reinventing themselves very profoundly. So to help repair the economic social damage caused by the pandemic, EU leaders have agreed on a green and digital recovery strategy to take us out of the crisis and lay the foundations for a modern and more sustainable Europe. The EU's long-term budget, coupled, coupled with our next generation EU uh, recovery instrument, it will be the largest stimulus package ever funded through the European Union budget. And this brings me to my second point, the vital contribution of research and innovation, and particularly road transport research, in responding to these challenges. I think we're all used to research defining the path to progress. But in this new green era, it will be the other way around. Bold and ambitious goals will need research and innovation based solutions. Because mobility and transport matters to all of us. They are enablers of economic and social life, from daily interactions to the functioning of global industrial supply chains. Yet mobility and transport also cause massive external cost. The sector is responsible for 23% of greenhouse gas emissions, a figure that is set to double by 2050 if present trends continue. And beyond that, air and water pollution and other negative associated effects. Transport therefore needs to reduce its emissions and become more sustainable. Achieving this means putting users first and providing them with more affordable, accessible and cleaner alternatives. To make our vision of a new green era a reality, we must make a fundamental transformation. And I think this will be one of the central messages of the communication on sustainable and smart mobility that the European Commission is set to adopt next week. We need an irreversible shift to zero emission mobility, a comprehensive policy to stimulate demand for zero emission vehicles without barriers across our single market. And my third message is that Horizon Europe will make a necessary contribution to the green and digital post-COVID recovery. Horizon Europe is set to be the largest EU research and innovation programme to date with key political priorities on climate neutrality and zero pollution, which will be mainly tackled within the cluster of collaborative research and innovation activities on climate, energy and mobility. Horizon Europe will support a range of new European partnerships with EU countries, the private sector, foundations, universities, research organisations and other stakeholders. And specifically in the area of road transport, we are preparing three new and ambitious partnerships. Firstly, a partnership uh, towards zero road transport, to zero, towards zero emission road transport. A second partnership on batteries and a third partnership on connected, cooperative and automated mobility. The two zero co-programmed partnership aims to set up an ambitious roadmap for a pollution-free road transport system. Beyond improving the climate and air quality, it will also safeguard the mobility of people and goods and ensure future European leadership in automotive innovation, production and services. Member States are already actively involved in bringing their knowledge and support also in the important area of the deployment of recharging infrastructures. Our future partnership on batteries will aim to prepare and equip Europe to manufacture and commercialise the next generation battery technologies by 2030. 
Research and innovation needs to deliver strong technical solutions across the whole battery value chain. And we need this work on batteries to work in synergy with the two zero partnership that I've just mentioned. And thirdly, the partnership on connected cooperative and automated mobility will bring together different actors across this sector to implement a long term European research and innovation agenda in this area. By 2030, we hope that this partnership will have demonstrated inclusive and user oriented mobility concepts with increased safety and a reduced carbon footprint. Our aim is to make Europe a world leader in the deployment of connected and automated mobility, both for people and for goods. Ladies and gentlemen, over the next two days, we're going to hear about the exciting results of more than 70 projects funded under Horizon 2020. These projects are making a vital and very positive contribution to our work on road transport and thus also to the European Green Deal. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate everyone who has contributed to these projects for your excellent work. The re research results this conference will showcase are preparing us for a new era of green and digital recovery after COVID-19. And I'd like therefore to conclude by thanking our colleagues from EGVIA and AirTrack for the organization of this conference. It's going to be an occasion for rich and mutually beneficial exchanges that I'm sure will contribute a lot to our continued success in making road transport research a central part of the European Green Deal. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, th this is, can you hear me? Yeah, your microphone is muted, I think. Oh. Okay, so now <laughs> I'm really sorry. Yes, I thought, uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I would like to apologize to everyone. I was, I, I still see that I have five minutes. So if you don't mind, I will be very fast in repeating what I just said. And uh, again, uh, I'm really sorry for having forgotten my microphone off. So uh, I would like to uh, thank very much uh, uh, Mr. Child for his uh, a very interesting speech that is setting actually 
uh, the scene for Horizon uh, Europe that is expected to, to start at the same time bridging with Horizon 2020. For me, there were two main, two main results coming from his speech or two main um, directions coming from, from the speech. One is that we are requested, the scientific community, the research community, the stakeholders are expected to uh, contribute with their research to the societal targets set by the Green Deal of the European Commission and the European Union as a, as a whole. So, as I said, this is expected to be largely a top-down driven uh, research. And secondly, that uh, our activities in, uh, in research mobility, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the research in the area of transport and mobility, uh, has to be directed towards a very sustainable future contributing to the uh, climate neutral continent by 2050. Maybe this target uh, seems to be far away, but uh, uh, what is being asked actually is that all the roadmaps that are being produced and uh, are being uh, put in place currently, they have to contribute on a step-by-step -step, uh, approach towards uh, these very ambitious targets. Zero emissions from transportation is really uh, an extremely challenging uh, target. In some cases, uh, it uh, can be even considered that it goes against physics, but it is not. Uh, it can also be uh, realized by, by a different means. And for this, uh, the three uh, new partnerships uh, will uh, are expected to substantially contribute. So, uh, we learned that uh, uh, Horizon Europe uh, is, is, is going to be fed actually by the results of Horizon 2020 projects. And uh, uh, as we all know, uh, once a project is over, the results will take some time to reach the market and bring its full benefit to the society, to the society as a whole. Uh, in uh, only in a few years. So Horizon 2020 might come to an end, but its activities, projects and outcomes are expected to uh, be visible in the very near future. And they are not over yet. At this point, I would like uh, again to take the opportunity to thank uh, very much the European Commission colleagues from DG Research and DG Move, as well as from INEA for fully supporting this, uh, this uh, conference. And uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's time now to uh, go back to the lobby where uh, Lucy and uh, Bianca will be waiting for you and will be joining for you to always guide you uh, towards uh, the different sessions. And from my side, I would like to wish you a very pleasant, nice, interesting conference. And I hope you will enjoy the program that we have tried to put together for you. Enjoy the conference and see you very soon. Goodbye.